Do a video today to show you how to change the spring on the front of a Range Rover Evoque. So basically you've got the spring at the top on this one. We've got a broken spring as you can see here. Um, we're going to try and do it by, um, we're going to leave the top bolts connected. So we've got these the top strut mount bolts here. We're going to leave that connected. Um, so the strut is going to be its full extension. We're going to re remove this clamp bolt on the rear. And then we're going to separate the black shock bit here. We're going to try and that will stay stationary. We're going to push the whole hub assembly down and hopefully that will disconnect it. So the first thing we're going to do is remove this, if you can see it here, this nut on the end of here. Okay, so we'll get on and do that and see how okay, we get on. Okay, so we're going to strip down. We've done a bit more. We've worked a bit more. We've loosened some nuts off. So right, first of all, Ian's going to, he's undone this one, so he's going to remove that bolt there which will release the bracket that holds your um there you go all that gets out of the way so that's getting more off the strut there's the nut there right okay and then there's your little drop link there to your anti-roll bar i'm guessing yep, yeah that's your anti-roll bar drop link okay put the nut back on there good idea right oh yeah we've got another wire we've got another little cable there clipped in there abs that's the abs and then we unplug this sensor here which which is we think oh yeah watch this one this is the one that goes up into the underneath of the shock now you might not have that because ours is a dynamic so it's got some witchcraft in the shock absorber so there we go that's that all clear and on the other side pull off the main hydraulic brake pipe and, and then the, bolt through the back. and we've loosened that we'll pinch bolt yeah we've taken him out you can see him there we started the video with that and then we're going to see how much travel we got so yeah, that was the that the was black. a pinch bolt. That came out easy enough, didn't it? Yeah, 19 and a 15. 19 and a 15. Right, there we go. Right. Now what we're going to do, we're going to... I don't know if this is the way the textbook says how to do it, but watch that cable there and we're bashing. We're just going to gently tap down on that. And what you see, if you look really close there, you'll see the hub coming away so you can see... Yeah, you can see it sliding away here. We're we gonna go keep going, are we? Yeah. Give him a bit more. Right, we're gonna go and have a cup of tea. We'll leave that soaked, but that's going pretty well, actually. One more little thing we've done is we've popped the little rubber, there he is, the little rubber clip off the, the nope. yeah, it's not the ride height sensor, it's the, I think it detects how bumpy the ride is. Again, you might not have that if you haven't got a dynamic, I'm not sure, but we've popped that off to give us a bit more. We've given it a bit more well. You can see now it's, it must be nearly out. Do you want to give it a few more taps in and see if we, uh, see if we'll catch at the moment of the video. got a bit of four inch by two inch wood just to make sure we've got enough travel and just jacked up underneath the bottom side of that so if you just give it a little push on the jack all right we're just lifting that up a bit just to give us a bit more clearance right let's have a go with that then see all clear, it's all clear So we're nearly out now, you can see the bottom of the things out there. So what we're going to do now, just give it one more tap or just try and push it out from the side. Just watch the brake pipe. It's going over to the side, isn't it? Yeah, that's going. That's it. Give it lever the two yeah we'll get that lever and just leave the two against each other yeah so if you just give it a lever you should just get the rest of that that's it okay so that's the two separated now so now they're separated it's a question of undoing the top strut bolts and we we should be away we're doing well so we've got all that off there now you can see there's the the hub and the, there's the, uh, the bottom of the strut and we've got to do the top strut mounts now so we've got one bolt here one bolt here what do you the, reckon no they're the strut brace they're the strut brace are they yeah i think it's the silver bolts so we, we've got to get this little bit of plasticness off here so there's a couple of clips holding it on 
Ian's on those now. If they undo. If, uh, yeah, they're those rubbish ones that don't really undo. You might have to use that trim and moving tool on those. So there's three bolts holding the top of the strut on. It's the three silver bolts. You can see the middle of the strut there. And then you've got three bolts surrounding it. 120 degrees, one there, one there, one there. We've just, we haven't taken that, you have to take the wiper blades off to get it, but we've just lifted it up by removing the front clips. And what are they, 13 millimeters those, are they? Yeah, so we're gonna just undo those, and hopefully then the strut will drop out. We're gonna have to catch the strut as we do them. Yeah. Get a ratchet spanner in there if you haven't got room for your socket. Half an hour after leaving the Land Rover dealership where they uh, wouldn't help us at all because um, they didn't remind us we needed a service. Um, we've now got the strut out, um, not the strut out, sorry, we separated the strut from the hub. Um, we're just done doing the top strut mounts now and we'll have the strut out and so far it's taken me longer than I waited to even drop the car off this morning. About a shorter time, sorry, than it took me to drop the car off this morning. So I'm kind of wishing I'd have just done it myself in the first place. But there you okay, go. Okay, so we've gone out and bought ourselves a, um, I'm going to say valves, but no, a suspension spring compressor, which you can see here. It wasn't that expensive. In the UK, we just paid £120 for that bit of gear from Machine Mart, and it looks a good job. Um, you can get cheaper ones, but we thought we might be doing this again, so we've we've spent the money on a valve, a, a coil spring compressor. You can get more simple ones that that just sort of have a bit of threaded bar and clamp it up. So we're going to have a go now at compressing the spring. So we need to compress the spring, and then we can remove the nut on the top end. Now, obviously, if you remove the nut and you haven't got the coil spring held, it, it's really quite dangerous because it can all ping off when you get the last thread off that this is all the energy stored in the spring is gonna um, launch that top mount everywhere so right then Ian we're gonna have a go with this new baby so let's let's compress him up a bit let's see how this works mind your fingers yet yeah, so you can you can see what's happening now the trouble is where it's broke it's at a bit of an angle but yeah so we're well clear now. So as long as that spring is clear off that top mount there, are we clear? Yeah, he's not touching. Yeah. We've got an air gap, so there's no, no danger of when we undo that. So you could undo this nut. Um, you need a special spanner, because you, you'll see if I look from the side, you can't see it. So you'll need a recessed spanner, but there's a hexagonal hole in the top to put an allen key. Now that's it. We're going to try using our um, impact driver, because it might go fast enough to actually just... Shout in, well done. So yeah, let's have a look at that bad boy. So yeah, if you use the impact driver, that will uh, hopefully mean you don't need to hold it. Otherwise, you'll have to use a, a a spanner and hold this with an Allen key. Right now, we should be able to take that top mount off, shouldn't we? Does it unscrew or just pull off? And it just wiggles off. Right there we go. So that's the top mount. Do you reckon that's, that looks okay, doesn't it? Yeah, that looks right. reusable. Yeah, it's supposed to have a. It's got a bearing. It's in got it the turning. Yeah, right. He's good. He's oh. good. It's all good. Right. So now I guess we have to work out how to slowly release that, don't we? There we go. Release that one out. Right. Let me shoot that so Whip those to the side. You got it. Yep. Stay. He ain't gonna fall far, is it? Let's have a look on that on the floor then. See if you can un un uncoil the two parts. So yeah, let's lay that out next to the uh, the new spring that we've got there. So that's the the fracture. Now the interesting thing that we're gonna have to do is is try and analyse the crack here. Now what worries me is this little area of rust by my thumb. That to me looks like that is a manufacturing defect. So if we look on here, it 
looks like ooh, there we go you can see those areas of rust there that look like they've then propagated and caused that crack so that rust crack has been going on for a while uh, here's the new one that's the new spring there so you can see that as you look from the top it should have a sort of flat coil at the top and it's not that flat at the bottom actually is it it will be when it compresses i'm sure ah yeah, uh, you've got a curling mount yeah so we'll right let's lay that back in there so it looks like there is a right and wrong way it looks like the flatter coil uh, our spring's got a blue mark goes to the bottom so when you seat the bottom into that corner there it, it sits concentric around the it seems to sit pretty much concentric around the shock so that's that what have we got to go on the top then uh, we've got to compress the spring again we've got to compress the spring now right we'll set that up. okay so we've got it lined up roughly we're now compressing the spring obviously when you're compressing springs take care because you are storing energy i'm gonna get that nice and clear at the top so we've got enough room to get that top mount on So we got a nice, so we got that all clear there at the top. Like that, and do we have to rotate that? Is there a? Make sure we get that. I should just see. See here, we might have to guide him on as we go. Put that. He looks pretty good, doesn't he? Gotta line them up as we drop them down, alright? Don't get your fingers stuck in it. That's it. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah, that's all the way off. That's all the way off. Right, so there's your the spring back on, and then we'll go and drop that in the car again. Okay, so we've got the strut there all ready to go back on. We've just put a bit of copper grease inside the hub there and just made sure there's no burr on that top edge from when we took it out um that's it that's, that's where we're going to go that's the the top there so we're going to open the bonnet poke that up there get a couple of bolts on and then position it into it back on Ian, do you want to show the, what we did there we put a screwdriver so we put the jack underneath and we jacked it on a little metal plate because um, you really, we tried jacking on the hub, but the angle wasn't right. It wasn't concentric with the line. So we jacked it like that, and that pushed it up. And that pushed it up nice and sweet in line. So now that's all back on. We've got the three bolts in at the top. We're just going to tighten all that up and put that all back together again. But that's not too bad a job. I reckon if you took your time and had a cup of tea in the middle, I reckon that would take you a couple of hours. In. Oh, no, most. most. What, an hour? An hour, yeah. We've, we've done that about in an hour. All right, well, good luck with that. The only point I will emphasise is that round the back there, you've got where the the cable goes in on the dynamic, um, and it's got to go in between the split here on the clamp. So when you're putting that hub back in, make sure you get the rotation of that shock absorber right, because you don't want to break that cable. I expect those shocks are heinously expensive. But there we go.